Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and squirrels, how are we doing today, eh? How are we doing? Hopefully you guys are having a good day and uh, you're not having a reoccurring living nightmare like I am. So, today's video we are going to be sitting here and doing a little bit of thinning out of the herd. Uh, some things are going to go away of the dodo bird and straight into the scrap bin. Some things have already found a new home. And uh, I'm just going to kind of run through real quick. Probably not real quick. Who knows? I can't read the future. But run down on how I am getting rid of things, why I'm getting rid of things the way that I am. And some things where it's just like you really need to just let go and throw this damn thing out and I just simply can't and or won't because uh, it has emotional attachment to me. So with that being said, before any of you ask, yes, I am still once again sick, the joy of having children, but that is not why you're here. You're here to see what's going on in the shop. So let's do that. Also, before we step off, I want to say this for those of you because there have been a whole schwack of you who've gone, oi, bye, start doing those lessons, bye. We want to learn more about that Fusion 360 there, bye. Um, don't worry. For those of you, who, one, who can't speak Newfoundlandese, that was my, um, <clears throat> that's, that's how Newfies talk up here in Canada, all right? Um, I am fluent, all right? However, I'm a horrible translator, but that's how it is sometimes. Anyway, um, Fusion 360 videos. Modeling specific, maybe specific to the off-road sector, okay, are coming down the pipe. They're going to be happening. I had a couple of you dudes reach out and being like, man, this is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to help me. I don't have any modeling software yet, but I need it. And hopefully you could teach me. And then I had a couple of you guys go, I wonder who wonder who the, uh, the secret instructors are going to be. And I wasn't even thinking of instructors yet. So the, to those of you who have stepped up and said, I want to help, I want to help teach the next generation or the previous generation or even current generation, however old the viewers may be. For those of you who said you want to help, thank you. For those of you who said you want to see this, thank you. Makes my life a little easier when it comes up with creating content. And it also makes my life easier when you guys say you want to help. So enough of that. Let's get going on with this week's episode. Do we do? All right. So as you can see, besides the dog poop on the floor, um, we have already started thinning out the herd. Uh, I'm standing where the box used to be right now. And with that, it's a very simple, I threw that bugger out. I loved the look of it. Absolutely loved it. However, it was in an accident before I got a hold of it. And every time I sat there and trimmed a little bit off and tried to do this and tried to do that, I was one, releasing stress in it. So it kind of always never stopped shifting which was a pain in the anus. Um, and two, I can, the vision that I have in my head of what I want this, wanted that box to look like, um, every time I worked on it, how can I explain this? It felt like I was getting both closer to the goal, but also further away from the goal at the same time. It's the best way I can explain how to do it. Next up, the frame. The frame has been sent off to its forever home. Somebody decided that they could make better use of it than me. So it's gone. Well, I wish they would have took the motor in trance. I really wish they would have took the motor in trance because this is the reoccurring nightmare that uh, I keep living and it won't stop. Yes. Yes, this lovely crane has sat there and once again let me down. 
So I was thinking maybe if I just lift the motor up and put it down, up and down, um, maybe <laughs> without trying to move anything, it's not going to drop it. Wah, wah, wah. I was wrong. It still fell. Not as far this time, but nonetheless, it fell. And I am... Once again, it's a good thing my wife was here because I was like, screw this. I'm going to take, unbolt this thing down to manageable pieces and throw it in the scrap bin. And she's like, like hell. There's no way in hell you're doing that. Um, walk away, take a day. I took a couple days and figure out what we're going to do. So I ran down to my local, local Napa store and picked up one of these. For those of you who don't know what that is, it allows me to pick the motor up from four points instead of two. And as well, when you're trying to shoehorn it into something, it, there's a threaded part on there, so it moves the balancing point back and forth. However, we have a problem with that. So, let us walk down this nightmare scenario together. <sighs> All right. This might take a minute. Now, for those of you wondering, why do I seem like I'm in such a good mood? I want to hear your comments below because I have no idea why I'm in such a good mood. Man, I wish I could just time lapse reality and just speed this up because this is painfully slow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so this is where we are at. All right. So I got the hoist all hoisted doing hoisty things. And as you can see, this is where the chain goes in. Okay. Um, it's supposed to go in there and all that other stuff. The only thing I can think of is because it went down like this and the chain was resting over here. Maybe something, once something shifted, it came over and helped pull everything up. I don't know. I'm not a proctologist. I don't know how these things work. However, I do know that that groove right here, this one right here, yeah. Now you can see it. Um, it's supposed to hold chain. It's supposed to hold chain. It's supposed to pinch this, this connection point right there. However, the, oh dear lord. I can't do it with one hand. Anyway, point is the gap between Sorry guys, this link here and this is nowhere near big enough. So I get to grind away. I'm sorry for those of you listening with, uh, with headphones in. Um, I get to grind away and try and pick that up. However, this then brings on the next issue that I'm having. Once again, because guess what I do not have? No, not concrete floor. Heavy lift capabilities. So this is going to be interesting. I got a feeling I should just say, screw it and get a damn bobcat in here. Go and rent one with forks. Because what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to take the front axle, the rear axle, and over there I want to take the uh, uh, 
transfer case, there we go, and put that all on the same pallet and call it a day because then I can strap it all down, it's all good to go, and then I'm not having to carry a whole bunch of other pallets or carry one thing at a time. I could just and gone. So this is the pallet. I have no idea where it came from. Maybe it was, it came from the old plasma table I had. Who knows? But I want to reinforce the bottom with some more two by fours just to strengthen it up, get rid of the one by threes and call her a day there. So that's the plan with that. Actually, I'm going to give myself a cheap win right now. I'm going to do that. I'm going to knock off the, uh, the one by threes that are on there and put the two by fours on and call her a day for modifying that pallet. I could use that win. A win's a win, no matter where it comes from. Unless it comes from your ex, then be suspicious. Be very suspicious. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. And yes, guys, there's almost no forethought into this episode. I apologize, but it is what it is. All right, I'm gonna clean up this dog poop and then we're gonna carry on. I don't know what that means. I hear some British guy saying that on Instagram all the time. I think it's fun. It's fun to say, so I say it. Kind of like the F word when I was 12. All right, so we got this here. Uh, clamp it down. Won't go to Clampy Town. Won't take me to Clampy Town. Oh, look at that. Eight and three eighths. Okay, so uh, I need a new priest and an old priest. This episode is just full of me just saying whatever comes into my mind. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so fun story time with Chris. Uh, I'm just being my weird goofy self today. Go outside and I see Sarah's driving away. I'm like, ah, like pretending that I'm singing to her. And she rolls down the window. Uh, hopefully you can hear the audio, but. Can I go push me? While she's rolling down the windows in her car, I quickly go down, make a snowball and launch it at her. And she just, <laughs> just gets the window up in time. Fun times. I'll tell you this, our eight year marriage has been full of moments like that. And either she secretly loves them or she's planning to kill me in my sleep. I don't know yet, but now the secret's out. All right, hopefully that doesn't acquit her of anything. We'll find out, you'll find out. However, she did bring me coffee. I should probably be worried. Anyway, moving on. Everything is in here now. We are going to cut it up, build it out, flip it over, call her a day. Yes, I know, cutting and building with wet wood is never good. There's only one situation where wet wood is a good thing. And that is building your own hydroelectric dams. You should use concrete, not wet wood. All right, moving on.
All right, so the shelf, I forgot, was made of two two by fours, eight feet long, screwed together. I get to reuse that to make the cradle for the motor. All right, which if in all honesty, it's probably gonna fall hmm, at least two more times, I'm guessing. And if it falls more than that, then I think that's a sign to scrap this motor, uh, mainly because it's a Chevy, and then put in maybe a Godzilla or just a five liter, who knows? Anyway, so everything's taken off here. I'm gonna pull it out from the wall, clean everything up a bit and then go from there. Uh, one thing I do wanna say, cause I don't wanna be this type of ass hat. You see all these metal shavings here, folks? Ooh, stubby screwdriver. Uh, I'm going to sit there. I have a magnet on wheels and I'm not gonna be like the previous owner of this place and leave the shop full of nails. I'm actually gonna sit here and, pardon me, I'm gonna sit here and go back and forth a few times. Clean it up as best as I can and then call her a day because at the end of the day, it's a gravel floor. Boop. And uh, yeah, they're gonna to have to deal with it. Anyway, take that apart, get ready to start using the gas ax on that. And then we're getting to the point where I need to start thinking about boxes. How am I gonna box a lot of this stuff up? I'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm gonna go in, check on the children, make sure they're not chewing through any drywall or trying to sell the other one on the black market. And then I'll come back out and we'll go from there. God damn, it's hot in here. I gotta turn that heater off. Okay, let's try this again. Um, so everything's cut up, loaded in the C can, or C can, the bin. The only thing left that I gotta do is that old school front axle that's hanging out underneath there. Uh, and then there's some I-beam here and some I-beam hanging out under the stove over there. And I'm tossing that mainly because I got no use for it. And, and here's the kicker. Um, it's about as straight as a dog's hind leg. So, if you don't know what that means, Google a picture of a dog and look at their hind legs, okay? That should be pretty self-explanatory. Other than that, in here, for the most part, everything that I can think of that needs to be scrapped or whatever, is gone. Things that I would not say no to if somebody offered me monies for it would be the bench, okay? Five by 10, um, the top needs to be cut off, like just the tax cut and then shimmed properly so it's flat again. Other than that, it's good to go. Uh, the metal rack, no, not the metal that's in the rack, just the rack itself. The engine hoist needs some love, but I can see it go. The 
20 ton press that I got, it could go. What else? What else off the top of my head? If anybody's interested in the office desk space thing, it can go. Mm, that's about it for now that I can think of. So, yes, I plan on keeping the cab for Bluebell and all that. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I was, I got so freaking pissed at it that I was getting ready to scrap it. Like I was actually like in my head lining it out. My wife was like, are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay, well, won't you go and look around inside? Just make sure everything that you want to throw out is out of there. And I seen this here. And as soon as I saw my son's signature, it's just like, I'm not going to be able to live with myself if I scrap that thing. I can't even scrap the whole thing, but keep that part. I have to keep it all. So that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, other than that, uh, packing stuff. So, oh, anybody wants to these, this bolt bin stuff, make me an offer, come pick it up. Other than that, when I go to pack everything, I'm going to try and put it all in ammo cans and we're planning on putting it into a cargo trailer. Still got to pick that up. But when we do that, what I'll do is I'll just pack everything in there, essentially play Tetris. So that's all really we can do. Anyway, other than that, guys, that's about it. Um, until we're actually moving or diving into the Fusion 360 stuff, um, it's just going to be a lot of shorts that you guys are going to be seeing on here. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys want to see for Fusion training. All right, guys? Because the first couple episodes might be very painful for, for you guys. Uh, if, you're computer Ill, if you're computer literate or whatever you want to call it. But I, I want to take it from you know nothing about the program. You don't know Jack Diddley. You don't know what icons do what, all that. And hopefully by the end of it, I could have, whenever that is, maybe in a year, year or two completion date, uh, have it so that it's a fully functional vehicle in there. I'm saying vehicle because that's, that's my personal thing right now. Um, I want to be able to completely build and design a vehicle in there. So I can just, when I come back, I can just send off parts to be cut and bent and formed and all that, and then pick them up and then just assemble a vehicle. But anyway, anyway, guys, that's it for this episode here. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for tuning in, boys and squirrels. If you like this stuff, leave a comment. If you don't like this stuff, don't leave a comment. Um, better yet, even if you don't like this, leave a comment. Um, and I'm going to try something new. In the comments below, for those of you who've made it to the end, leave a comment of who you, what celebrity you think I look like, all right? Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I gotta go in and feed some feral children. Cheers, stay focused, have fun, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers. Pliers and a pry bar is what I need. I got the pliers, I got a pan, I got an apple, Ugh, apple pan. Pineapple pen, apple pen, pee pee, hippie, pee pee pee. Oop.